Jesus was engulfed in his ministry. He had been in it now for a year and a half and we know his ministry only lasted three years. His men were with him. They had seen miracles, great teachings, amazing stuff had gone on. So Jesus took him to a kind of, well, isolated place, a place called Caesarea Philippi, up into the hills. Above that was Mount Hermon where he originally or soon would be transfigured. And he asked them some questions. He said, what's the word on the street? Who do people say that I am? And they said, well, some think you're John the Baptist because Jesus would talk about, you know, leaving the old life and being born again. He said, and, and, and some think you're Elijah because Jesus did all these miracles like Elijah did. And some say you're a prophet because he spoke so boldly and so authoritatively. So Jesus said to his men, who do you say that I am? And it was Peter who spoke up and said, you're the Christ. And Jesus agreed with him. He was the Christ, he was the anointed, he was the Messiah. And then he began, Jesus did, to talk about what the Messiah was gonna do. He was gonna suffer, he was gonna die, and he was gonna rise from the dead. And Peter said, no way, Lord, that's not gonna happen to you. He agreed that he was the Christ, but he didn't want him to act like it, to be the Messiah, he didn't understand it. And I think sometimes we're that way. Yes, you're the Christ, you're the Son of God, you're, you're, you're the Lord. But then when he wants to tell us what that means in our life, we want to say no. See, you can't have it both ways. He is the Christ, he is the Lord, and we have to let his plan be his plan, not ours. We can't tell him how to do his job. And that's what Peter was doing. Peter was rebuked, relationship was restored, and they continued in the ministry. Jesus, you're the Christ. You're not John the Baptist. You're not Elijah. You're not one of the prophets. You're the Christ. And we need to let him be that and follow his will and who he is, not ours.